Welcome back to a new episode here in Swati. In today's episode, we're going to talk about morphing shapes or morphing one shape into another using the Ventures of 16. So this little example that we have here is one that I made for the product page of the Thea Transitions Pack that I've been working on for the past couple of months and I've mentioned a couple of times already. So yeah, you can see here it's a remain of another one that I did another recording that I recorded for like 20 minutes but then the audio was broken for some reason all right so first of all let me just show you here this is what it looks like uh, when using this is what it looks like when using it um, when I did the animation right and you might see you might wonder what are these two these two are simply there because I use them as the, what do you call it, as the base for um, shaping the form, right? So the first thing that we need, let's just get right into it. I'm going to show you the basics. So then you can apply and it will be cool if you can make your own video and then upload it and tag us or let us know in the comments. So then we can check it out. It will be a cool like, I don't know, reaction video or whatever. I'm no, I'm not a professional motion graphic artist or anything like that whatsoever. I just thought I would do it and I tried it and it worked. So then I was like, yeah, that would be a cool tutorial video, right? So I'm just adding this gradient right here just because right now. We're going to press here too so we can see this background. And on this background, what we're going to do is we're going to add a polygon tool. And this polygon, we're going to take the solid out. And drawing with this polygon is what's gonna allow us to get whatever shape that we want. Uh, so first, let's take this alpha, make it transparent. And while working, you can take the, well, let me just make it one screen. While working, you can uncheck these two. So it actually really reduces the load on your system, right? Okay, so we have this polygon right here. The first thing that we need to do, if we want to make a circle, is we're going to add an Eclipse uh, tool right here. Make it smaller. And we're going to hold Control and select both of those. Then we're going to go right here to the polygon. And then we can click anywhere right here. And then we're going to drag this right on top of our line. Try to make it as accurate as possible, right? As close to it as possible. And then we're gonna create another point right here. We're gonna do four points, sort of like one on each corner. I know it's a circle and doesn't really have corners, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, yeah, we're gonna make this a little bit smaller. And the way that it works is, we are gonna use this, if we wanna start with a circle, we wanna drag these, holding control, because if we don't, it will make both of them and it will mess up the whole thing. So basically you want to do this for all sides and after you get all sides done, you will be able to tweak it uh, to make it as accurate as possible or as accurate as you wish. Uh, the more accurate you want it to be, the more time it will take it. Uh, it will take you to tweak because there's always a little thing that moves or whatever, like here you can see um so yeah you want to play around with these things right here so then you can get the shape as close as possible to a circle so then we have our circle right and in order to animate this if we want to animate it we're not going to animate it using the polygon we're going to animate using transform nodes and what i recommend is that if you want to animate it and Let's say rotate it, you will add one transform node. If the, your shape is a circle, you want to add one transform node and make sure the pivot point, which is that X, if you click right here in the middle and press tap three times, it will select the pivot point. You want to make sure that X is right in the middle. So the rotation works fine. And you see our shape is not perfect here, but it doesn't really matter. Then, if you want to make a translation sort of movement, like up, down, or sort of like that, to make it seem that there's a floor, you want to add a second transform node. And we're going to go right here in the middle again, press the pivot point, 
and we want to make sure that that's right at the bottom or at the base of our shape. So then when we translate this, it looks fine when it's rotating at the same time. If you animate both of them, you're not able to do that because the pivot point being right here, it will make the whole thing spin like that. So it, it doesn't really work um, if you try to do it that way, right? Okay, but we're not going to animate anything right now. We're going to just put it right there in the middle. Make sure everything is in the middle. And this one is right at the base of our shape. So let's just get right into the morphing shape uh, again. So the basics for shape morphing. The main thing that you need to take into account is what shape you want to use. You can use any image, but if you do an image like let's say the shape of somebody, it will take a long time because there are so many details. One thing that you need to do is basically you're going to go here to the frame where you want this shape morphing or shape transformation to start. You're going to go down here and right click and press set key. After that, you can go a couple of frames ahead. Uh, we're at 20. Let's go 28. It's fine. And if we want a square shape or a triangle shape, what we're going to do is here, not there, but we're going to take this rectangle here. And if we want a triangle, we want to make sure that we sort of have a perfect square mask as our base. And then we're going to rotate these a little bit. If we rotate these 90 degrees, whoop, not 90, 45, I'm sorry. Then we can adjust it and make sure that we get a triangle. And the way to get a triangle is to make sure these two points are aligned. So right there, and they are sort of like aligned. It can be a little bit smaller or bigger, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, as I said, the details and perfectionism can be a curse if you are one of those. And I am like that sometimes too. Okay, so following the same process that we did for the ellipse, we're gonna select both of those and then go back to the polygon here. And since we already have set the key animation, let's go frame 28 again. Uh, when we move these, it will automatically create a keyframe. So we wanna go and move these right to the point where we want them to be. Let's say here, it's the middle and then there. And this doesn't look like a triangle at all, right? So the way to do it, to make it look and adjust to the shape is you're gonna have to play with the angles again and sort of like put them right on top of the green line, which is your base shape again and making these straight, as straight as you can. like that that's not a perfect triangle but it will do so you have here our circle and then it turns into a um into a triangle i'm sorry i forgot the word yeah and the reason why it's sort of like going back again is because there is a keyframe right here uh of the circle again for some reason i don't remember creating it but it doesn't matter if you, if you want your shape to end in a circle again, the thing that you can do, if you want it to stay a little bit like a triangle, what you want to do is go here to keyframes and select the polyline here that you have and see where the triangle shape is. So you're going to select these and holding control and dragging, it will basically create a copy of that same shape. So it will stay the same way. So then it will stay like that for a few minutes. Uh, for as long as you put it to be, right? Um, you can also minimize these. We can erase that other one or we can completely just, whoop, not like there. We're just gonna drag these and make it like that. There. And then if you wanted to make it a little bit more smooth, also you can go here to the spline selector and you can press F and then you can also play around with these. If you wanted to add a little bounce effect, you can add more things right here. And let's see what does that, that does. If you want it to be a sort of like flexible, I guess you can, whoop. not that. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, yeah, what I was mentioning is if you want it to be sort of like bouncy, what you have to do is you're gonna go here to where it ends 
and have a copy of what you want to be. And then right in between those two keyframes, you're gonna go and select the point that you want to use. Let's say here, this one, here, and then I'm gonna go back to this one and make sure that our point goes back to the same place that it was before, right here maybe, let's see, like that. And this one is sort of like pretty short, I guess. So we're gonna drag this all the way out and there it adds the flexibility I guess to it. Um, so yeah, so that is basically how you morph shapes in DaVinci Resolve. You just, if you wanna animate this to move from one place to another, you're gonna make sure that for rotation ones, you wanna have one transform node that's specifically for rotation and then one that's for translation. That way you're not messing up and you're gonna make sure that the rotation one is above the transform for the translation part. But yeah, hopefully after this quick, sort of quick, hopefully quick tutorial, you're able to understand a little bit of how to move shapes. Oh, and one important point is that if you get rid of any point here, it will get rid of it um, on the whole thing. So you don't wanna do that. But if you add one, it won't affect the animation unless you go back and then like whoops where is it unless you go back and move it then it will it will affect the animation but adding points later on after you've done your animation doesn't do anything unless you move these before your animation was completed yeah, that was just a quick note yeah so hopefully after this video you're able to understand the basics and if you want to do anything and upload it it will be really cool um and so then we can check it out yeah so hopefully after this video i've said hopefully and closed the video like a thousand times already yeah so i hope to see you in the next video here in swabi don't forget to leave a like if you did like the video don't forget to comment down below whatever you want us to know any feedback is always appreciated i hope to see you in the next video here in swabi